What's good, you guys? You know who it is, man. It's your boy, Mr. Relentless Lex, and I'm back like I never left. Yes, Sersky. All right, so you guys, man, we got Laurie Harvey. Finally, we got Laurie. Finally, bro. Revealing why she dumped Damson Idris. Damson Idris. Now, it's been alleged that he's been seduced by the butt monster, did he? Oh, um, alleged. This is all alleged news. But, so Lori Harvey is spilling the beans on Damson and Diddy? Or is she spilling the beans on Diddy on Damson? Or whoever was on who? You feel me? <laughs> Spicy. So funny because there's because I'm so quiet. Yeah. There's been so many stories that have yeah. been made up about me. Like yeah. I've seen stories about me being like fully in love with somebody and we have like this whole relationship and I'll see the guy and I'm like I've actually never even met him before. Looks like Lori has spilled the tea on what really went down <laughs> between her before. and Dams and Idris and rumor has it that Diddy might have played a role in their relationship drama. So what exactly did she say? Well for starters it seems that Hollywood's creepiest gay gatekeeper has allegedly been having hots for Idris. For context, a recently resurfaced video of Idris and Diddy has been making rounds on the internet. In the video, Diddy, who is recording, appears to be in some sort of hangout in his crib with Damson and another guy where they were watching Snowfall. They're watching the game with my brother eating some chicken and wobbles. This pretty black right here. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, you did your thing this season. Creepy that even fans felt Diddy was trying to groom Damson. That's how his predators groom their victims, one fan Dang. wrote. Now, word on the street has it that Sean Diddy, Diddy Combs chain, may boy. have his sights set on wooing Dams and Idris, possibly as a way to get back at Lori Harvey for ending their relationship. The rumor mill is abuzz with speculation about the motivations behind Diddy's alleged interest in Damson, suggesting a desire for revenge after the reported breakup with Lori. According to the gossip outlet TMZ, Lori Harvey has long been a part of the Combs family's social circle, and this connection is not surprising given the intertwined histories of the Harvey family and Diddy. The friendship between Diddy and Steve Harvey dates back to at least 2005, creating a foundation for Lori and Diddy's relationship. Despite the rampant speculation and the watchful eyes of the paparazzi, the romantic involvement between Lori and Diddy was never officially acknowledged. The first whispers of their connection emerged in the summer of 2019, but both individuals maintained a veil of privacy around their personal lives. Justin Combs, Diddy's son, who was previously linked to Lori, made vague comments about their relationship, emphasizing their their shared preference for privacy. In the summer of 2019, Lori Harvey and Diddy grabbed headlines with their jet-setting adventures. From Cabo San Lucas, Mexico to Italy, where they shared meals with Lori's parents, their travels fueled the gossip mill. The couple's appearance in matching outfits in Manhattan and the intimate Italian lunches added fuel to the rumors. Oh, yeah. Speculation even arose about a possible oh, yeah. engagement, but Lori promptly dispelled those rumors. A photograph of her wearing a substantial ring on her finger at a Ciroc event led to false engagement rumors, prompting Lori to clarify, I'm not engaged, and cautioning against believing everything reported on blogs. By October 2019, signs began to suggest a potential breakup. Lori reportedly unfollowed Diddy on Instagram, a modern indicator of relationship discord. Sources close to Diddy described their relationship as a fun fling, with Diddy prioritizing his own healing and family. An insider linked to Diddy shared with E! News. He and Lori had a fun fling, but Diddy is still healing and focusing on himself right now. He is not ready to be in a long-term committed relationship and is focusing on his kids right now. Interestingly, shortly after the rumored split, Lori took the opportunity to address speculation about her dating history in a video interview with E! News host Adrian Baylon. She revealed how she often hears stories about being in relationships with people she has never even met in person. When asked about the biggest misconception about her, Lori laughed off the rumors saying, I'm so quiet. There's been so many stories that have been made up about me. I've seen stories about me being fully in love with somebody and we have this whole relationship and I'll see the guy and I'm like, I've actually never even met him before. She seemed to allude to the rumors linking her to Diddy and his son, Justin Dior Combs, stating unequivocally. I heard I've dated a father and son before. Not true? I, absolutely not true. Lori and Damson sparked romance rumors in December 2022 when they were spotted on multiple outings following Harvey's split from Michael B. Jordan. One month later, the socialite took to social media to make her new relationship Instagram official. 
If you missed it, I hate that for you. She captioned a selection of photos from her birthday party. The uploads included a snap of Harvey posing for the camera while sitting on the British actor's lap. The duo's romance continued to blossom, and in May 2023, a source exclusively told us that Harvey and Idris had formed a special connection. Lori's got her heart set on being the next Hollywood power couple, the insider shared. Lori adores Damson, and he's equally smitten. Just a few months before announcing her romance with Idris, Harvey shared what she was looking for from a partner on Bumble's Love to See It YouTube series, transparency, openness, and communication, she said. I didn't really know myself, I didn't really know what I liked, what I didn't like. I just feel like I hadn't really experienced life," she recalled in August 2022, referring to a past unspecified relationship. So at that point I was like, okay, I'm going to date on my terms. However, I want to move, whatever I want to do. Bro, I want to say, by the way, I mean, this is off the, this is a sidebar, but I've never seen a, a bra cut like that, bro. That's nice bra. I'm just saying, a brassiere. That's nice. All right, carry on. I'm going to do it. And if it's no longer serving me, I'm going to move on. In November 2023, Harvey and Idris confirmed they had called it quits after less than a year of dating. In a joint statement shared exclusively with The Hollywood Reporter, Harvey and Idris said, We are at a point in our lives where our individual paths require our full attention and dedication. We part ways remaining friends with nothing but love and respect for each other and the time we shared together. In any case, word on the street is that the influential model and the Snowfall actor decided to call it quits on this year's Halloween after Harvey showed off her costume. The carousel of images featured the Yevra swimsuit creator as Lara Croft, the main character from Tomb Raider. While many commenters voiced their disappointment in Harvey's lax costume, there were others who asked about Idris's whereabouts, but it seems the man might actually be out of the picture for good, as several other pointers outside of her costume have also come up in recent times, one of which is someone in their camp confirming the split. According to a source close to Harvey, the two are no longer seeing each other. News outlets reportedly spoke with Harvey's close friend, and they suggested the two are no longer a couple. They were dating and it was great, but they're no longer around each other like that, the source explained. There's no beef, no cheating, nothing like that. They're just doing their own thing right now, the friend added. Well, let's just say some fans never thought there was a world where their relationship would last. One of the people with this belief wrote, He wasn't her type. I've never seen her with a dark-skinned man. Poor Damson, he tried. He looked lost at her birthday dinner. No one is surprised when it comes to her. To others, it was just an opportunity to make jokes to troll the pair. The user in this case wrote, Lori Harvey and Damson Idris breaking up proves that the only thing that's real is J. Cole going triple platinum with no features. <laughs> the news about their split came J. as a Cole surprise to several platinum. people, even some in the industry, as Lori and Idris seemed absolutely perfect for each other since the beginning, even though they were a little shy at first. Meanwhile, in addition to making moves at him in public, Diddy also invited Damson to one of his infamous parties. In fact, Damson even talked about it during a 2022 interview with The Breakfast Club. It's funny, like I'm about to be nervous, but they know so much about my work that I'm almost not allowed to be nervous hey, anymore, right he now, explained. Hey, I remember when I first went to the gold party at Oscar night and Puff Daddy introduced me to Hov. That's how I met Hov, through Puff. And Puff was like, yeah, Hav, this is Damson Idris. He's like the new Denzel Washington. And I was like, nice to meet you. And Hav walked away and Puff was like, you see how you're acting right now? Like ain't nothing a big deal? Yeah, keep that, keep that, he continued. So ever since then, if I meet anyone, and it isn't like some hater stuff, like I love them, but keep it in. At the end of the day, like I said, if ever meet Denzel, it's just thank you. I'm not asking for a picture. I'm not asking for advice or anything. Just thank you. You've already given me everything through existing. Now it might seem as though Diddy only invited Damson in order to introduce him to key people in the industry, but we know better. A lot more than networking happens in those parties. One person who almost fell prey for these parties is none other than Tyler the Creator. During a July Ow. appearance on DJ Drama's Gangsta Grills podcast on Audible, Tyler the Creator dropped a major bombshell about his early days in the music industry. The 32-year-old rapper revealed that both Jay-Z and Diddy had offered him record deals before he found success on his own, but he turned them down for a very specific reason. According to Tyler, Jay-Z invited him and his crew to one of his Los Angeles homes, where they enjoyed tacos together. 
During their time together, Jay-Z expressed interest in signing Tyler to his label. However, the young rapper declined the offer, along with another one from Diddy, because he wanted to maintain sole creative control over his business. Him, Puff, a lot of people were interested. I don't know, I just want creative control and do everything, Tyler explained to DJ Drama. Despite turning down the deals, Tyler, the creator, and Jay-Z went on to build a strong relationship. They collaborated on Frank Ocean's track, Biking, in 2017, and Tyler has praised Jay-Z for giving him ill advice over the years. Many fans are convinced that Tyler refused to collaborate with Diddy, probably because he had heard of all the rumors about Diddy's alleged attempts at GM male artists that came under his wing. In any case, rappers like 50 Cent have made fun of Puffy regarding the types of parties he'd make where there were all men and supposedly even younger men. That's why I don't be going to them puffy parties. And hug you Smart from the man, front and 50. the back at the same time? F you talking about? He said. In a clip circulating on social media, he continued. Look, if you into that, you into that. I'm fine with it. To each his own. I'm just saying this ain't my kind of party. It's uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girl's bathroom when ish like that is going on. <laughs> Usher also bathroom. spoke about these parties. You see, at just 14 years old, Usher attended what was referred to as Puffy's Flavor Camp. And in a 2004 interview with Rolling Stone, Usher revealed that Diddy introduced him to the adult lifestyle, and he witnessed some wild things at Diddy's house. Puff introduced me to a totally different set of ish, S specifically. S is so hot in the industry, man. There was always girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it or several people in a room having an orgy. You never knew what was going to happen. Usher also spilled the tea on The Howard Stern Show when he talked about his time at Diddy's Place. In a 2016 interview, he told Howard Stern that he truly learned what it meant to be famous after living with Puff Daddy for a year at the age of 14. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. In the same interview, Usher went on to reveal how Diddy would bring bro, up- Bro, is it me or do it look like Usher is blushing right there, bro? I swear. <laughs> That's how you know he guilty, bro. Look, the, my man Stern asking Usher about Diddy. That nigga blushing. <laughs> that nigga, that nigga ain't cheese the whole time. I had a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his like... first Stern Show interview. In the same interview, Usher went look, on to look, reveal look how him. Diddy would bring a bunch of women into a room with 14-year-old Usher to see if he would become nervous. In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. What's worse is that Puffy apparently rewarded Usher's cooperation by producing his first album. But after the debut didn't do as well commercially as expected, Puffy literally abandoned him. The rapper passed on being a part of Usher's <laughs> second like album called My Way, which went 6x platinum in the late 90s. Besides that, in a recently resurfaced interview with Kevin Hart, Diddy let it slip that he and Usher used to sleep in the same bed when Diddy was 19, which means Usher was just 10 years old at the time. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10, I was a little... Meanwhile, Jaguar Wright has also exposed truths about powerful people like Diddy in the industry. According to Wright, she's hired an entertainment lawyer who worked with Bad Boy around 2003, and this legal eagle has a doozy of a story to share. Wright alleges that Diddy has been using his power to force his subordinates to satisfy him. Apparently, Diddy had a meeting with the talented singer and actor, Christopher Williams, about a demo deal. Damn, but when crazy. the attorney went to Diddy's office to get approval for some paperwork, she was in for quite a shock. She allegedly walked in on Williams performing an intimate act on Diddy. But here's the kicker. That surprising sight didn't seem to bother the lawyer at the time. However, the next day, Diddy brought it up and allegedly asked if she intended on telling anyone. As if that wasn't already terrible enough, the rapper reportedly went on to threaten her, saying that he would ruin her life if she spilled the beans. Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene Deal commented on Jaguar's accusation on his YouTube channel. Deal said that Puff was often sexually fluid and once took Zibit to a gay club. He also suggested that he had seen Diddy engage in gay acts and, unlike Jaguar, he saw it with his own eyes. In fact, in a recent interview, the former bodyguard spoke about how he allegedly caught Diddy being intimate with J. Rule. Gene claimed that Diddy might have taken a whole bag of S toys to J. Rule's house at one point in the past. The story starts when I'm with Puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping. In an interview, Gene said he went with Diddy to a store where he saw Diddy getting 
checks for himself and paying bucks on the counter not to get his stuff checked. He then said that he, Diddy, and another company went well, to North Carolina in a private jet where they stayed at a grand hotel, and Diddy and the other guy went to the presidential suite together. So later that afternoon, this rapper and Diddy, they were all in the room together, Jean Deal explained. Next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We were at the presidential suite. So I opened the door and the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. The intruder claimed he was Jay Rule's cousin, and he tried to get into the presidential room. Now Gene had been given clear instructions not to let anyone enter the room, and so he told Jay Rule's cousin that he couldn't go into the room. Despite being warned, Gene claimed the gentleman outside the door then attempted to muscle his way into the hotel suite, even after Gene informed him Jay Rule and Puffy were busy at the moment and wanted privacy. His arrogant behavior resulted in Gene grabbing the guy and slamming him hard into the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Jaw Rule ran out of the room. Puff got his towel, Jaw grabbing his towel, but they kid. The commotion had caused the two gentlemen to leave their suite and holding onto their towels with a bewildered cousin looking at them. Gene Deal continued spilling the can of worms. And so, then J Rule was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Gene, that's my cousin. When Puffy asked Gene what had happened, the bodyguard explained that he had tried to get into the room that Gene was warning him not to. He said, he tried to get in the room, I told him he couldn't get in the room. And Puff looked at Jai and Ja said, yo, you ain't want to go in that room, because it was a lot of freaky-ish going on. Gene was super amused with the freaky stuff statement because it was hilarious to him seeing Howells talk about doing freaky stuff Dang. together. Additionally, according to Deal, Diddy's networking strategies involved frequent boy, visits to Turkish baths, Dang. where he allegedly met with gay men. What they do in the Turkish bath, a lot of gay men meet. Deal suggested that this was a common practice for certain individuals in the industry. According to Deal, these Turkish bath meetings were more than just a place for relaxation. They served as a unique setting for business discussions. He claimed that individuals seeking connections with executives like Diddy were compelled to attend these baths and purportedly engage in questionable exchanges in return for career advancements. Turkish bath settings? To each his own, though, bro. That's great. But that's a lot of sh that these. He then added, that's a lot of what these guys get into when they start having certain meetings with certain people. They meet them Dang. at the Turkish bath and they do their meetings and they meet their peoples in those types of situations where they're comfortable at so they don't have to worry about their indiscretions coming out. Deal's comments suggest a hidden side of the music industry where personal and professional boundaries may blur. The Turkish bath, as described by Deal, appears to be a unique space where individuals could conduct business without fear of judgment or exposure. He further emphasized the frequency of these meetings, stating, twice, sometimes three times a week, me and the driver be outside. He'll run into the Turkish bath. Yikes. In any case, although nothing has been confirmed about Diddy's alleged desire for Damson, fans are convinced that he might have attempted something with him. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye. Turkish bath. Did it, boy. <laughs> Bro. Gene says a place where Diddy would go called a Turkish bath. You can go there and be yourself. <laughs> Bro, it's, it, I don't need a place. I don't have to go to a place called a Turkish bath. I got a shower to be my... Bro, why would I want to go lay on an octagon-shaped platform with some naked men talking about I'm taking a Turkish bath and I just want to be my... Bro, did it. It's off the chain, bro. The butt monster. The butt monster's off the chain. He done gave... He done allegedly... He done gave uh, Usher the STD. He out here taking Cassie Cookie and they're paying her for it. Make it forcing her to have BBCs up her uh, cervix area <laughs> while he watched <laughs> and touched and everything else, bro. It's all alleged news, but it's all on the internet, bro. Dang, that's just crazy. It, it, nothing, nothing that he's doing seems to surprise me right now, bro. Gene, I got a new name for Gene. Gene, spill the bean. Spill the bean, Gene, bro. That's what. <laughs>